One more major feature of D Digital Performer 10.1. You, you've worked on this project, it's all put together, audio, MIDI, editing, plugins, uh, automation, everything. You're now ready to deliver it in a final form. Well, we use Bounce to Disk for that. So I just hit Select All, Command A. I selected everything in my sequence from start to finish, and I'm going to hit my keyboard shortcut for Bounce to Disk. Now, the Bounce to Disk window has been revamped in version 10.1, so let's take a quick walk through, through it. Um, I can always select my project format. I'm bouncing to WAVE or AFF or audio CD or MP3 or even QuickTime Movie, which is something I use more and more specifically when working to picture because I find directors just love receiving a rendered movie with my, with my music, their dialogue, if there's a sound effect stem, I just give them a movie so they can see what I did. They can look at what it, an approximation of what this is going to look like. There's no more sending them an audio stem that they have to import into their editor and then sync up and then you know adjust the levels of. I can deliver a movie at any point very, very easily. Let's look at the next uh, option. This is offline bounce. Now, offline bounce is something a digital performer has had for its entire existence. When, when you tell DP to do a bounce, what it has traditionally done is it does an offline bounce faster than real time. The faster your computer is, the faster it'll blaze through that bounce and get to the end of it, but you can't hear it. And for some people, they actually prefer doing audible bounces. Now we have that option. If I unclick offline bounce, DP will now do an audible uh, real-time bounce, so you can listen to your project one last time as it's being written to that final file. So some people just like that. It's a more traditional way of working, and uh, it just gives you that peace of mind of, or you just need to sit back and enjoy your work one last time and make sure it's the way you want it. So that's available as an option. You choose your channels, stereo or 5.1 or, or other. Choose your format. Um, you tell DP what do you want to do with this bounced file. You can not import it and it can just be a file on your, uh, on your hard drive. You can tell it to add it to the sound bites window of this project or you can tell it to add it as a track in the current sequence that we're looking at. Now source, we have always been able to B uh, bounce specific outputs. So if you're, if you're working with multiple outputs or multiple auxes, you can do that. But we can now select tracks that can be bounced. And this opens up the new world, which has been much requested, of stem bouncing. So every track that I select here that's going to this output, if I now click OK, let's say I give it a file name of my trailer dash, and I leave that open. If I hit OK, DP will now bounce every single one of these tracks going to that output sequentially, one after the other, and it will name them My Trailer Dash Dialog, My Trailer Dash Sound Effects, My Trailer Dash Guide Piano, and so on. So this makes it very easy to just, with one click, go through, and it'll create all those files for you. One more enhancement with Bounce to Disk, it's not found in the Bounce to Disk menu, but it's found in the File menu under Bounce Settings. We now have the option to include audio patch through in a bounce. This is most helpful to, let's say you're a composer and you have one or more external Vienna Ensemble Pro Machines that are being returned into your master digital performer sequence via an aux track. Well, now you can use those live inputs uh, that are coming in via auxes and they can be included in bounces. So that saves, also saves you a lot of time of being able to stem these things out. Stemming is useful. I keep using the word stem. Stemming is very useful if, for example, you need to export every track in there because it's on the way to a mix engineer or, or the dub stage, or, uh, or you're collaborating with someone on a different platform and you just want them to have every single track so they have control over your work. When you do the bounce, every single track is bounced from the same start point. So they're very easy for whoever's on the other end to import, line them up, and they can get to work with the materials that you provide. So um, audio patch through, if you have anything external that you need to incorporate into a bounce, you can now do that. Um, the one caveat, the one caution I would give you is, if you have a live mic patched in, you're gonna wanna make sure that is muted because you don't want that going into your bounce and becoming part of your final product.